So you rolled your ankle playing pickleball. Now what? That's what we'll try to answer in this video today. Hey guys, Phil here, doctor of physical therapy. In this video, we're gonna talk about ankle sprains. Rolling your ankle is also known as an ankle sprain. It's one of the most common injuries that can occur with any land-based sports or activities. It could be running, playing soccer, playing pickleball, or even something as simple as walking and stepping wrong. So what is an ankle sprain? An ankle sprain is a sprain of the ligament at the lateral aspect of your ankles. And you have all these little ligaments on the outside of your ankle. And when you twist your ankle, those ligaments can get aggravated. So ligaments are tissues in the body that are in charge of holding two bones together. You have the big shin bone down here and you have a little bone called the fibula off to the side. And that connects to some of your foot bones, right? And you have all these ligaments that help connect your fibula to your foot bones. And when you roll your ankle, those ligaments can get stretched too far and that can create some inflammation in the area. Some swelling may occur afterwards and it can be a little bit stiff as a result of that. Side note, in this video, we're talking about inversion ankle sprains, AKA the most common form of ankle sprain. It's what you typically think of when you think about ankle sprains. It's when you roll your ankle in. There's another form of ankle sprains called eversion ankle sprains and we're not gonna talk about that. That's when you roll it the other way basically and that's a lot more rare. Next question, how do ankle sprains even happen? Basically, ankle sprains happen when you lose control of your foot. Maybe you're chasing out the ball and then all of a sudden you change your direction and you plant your foot the wrong way. That's when it can happen. And maybe you're not paying attention. Maybe you're just walking along, minding your own business, and all of a sudden there's a ditch and you plant your foot the wrong way and you roll your ankle. It's hard to say exactly why or how it happens, but usually it's a combination of sudden movement, you're not prepared, and boom, you roll your ankle. And to be honest, sometimes it just happens. Next, what do you do after an ankle sprain? So after an ankle sprain, there might be some swelling. Like I said, that's normal. That's your body's natural reaction to an injury. It's trying to bring more blood flow to the area to try to heal it. So that's a good thing. It's like getting a bruise. After you bump something, there's a little bit of swelling in the area. That's the body's reaction to the trauma. So traditionally, after these musculoskeletal types of injuries, we use the acronym RICE. What that means is rest, ice, compression, and elevate. That's still very valid, especially after rolling an ankle in the acute phase in day one or day two, things are really puffy. But what you don't wanna do is completely offload it because if you don't use it, you lose it. And sometimes if you complete offload for a long time that can create some stiffness in the ankle. So continue to use your ankle, walk around, but maybe cut back on the athletic activities, cut back on pickleball, cut back on running, um, just to let things calm down. So traditionally people use ice, but recently some people are saying that icing can actually delay healing. The argument is that after an injury, you want the blood flow to get to the area, but if you ice it too much, that can decrease blood flow, which could potentially delay some healing. But in my opinion, just ice as needed. If it's super achy and you feel like you need something extra, just ice it. It's not gonna be the end of the world. It's not gonna make or break your healing. The next thing you can do is compression. Use an ankle brace. So these are commonly found in all drug stores. It's like the lace up type of ankle brace. They're great to provide some extra support. So you put on your normal sock, put the brace on, and then you put it in your shoe. These are great for just preventing extra motion at the area, especially when things are achy. Having that support, it's gonna be huge for the healing. Next, we're gonna talk about elevation. When you're elevating something, you want it to be above the level of your heart. So say I rolled my right ankle. I want to elevate it like this. So you could be in bed, put some pillows underneath your legs, but basically above the heart. Here's a disclaimer. Not all injuries are the same, and there are levels to things. If after you roll the ankle, you can't even put weight on it, it's super painful, excruciating, it's ballooning up, then it's maybe worth it to get it checked out, get an x-ray, just to make sure things are okay. But in this video, we'll focus more on the more common ankle sprains, meaning you can still walk around on it. It might be a little achy, but it's not so bad that you can't even put weight on your leg. So there are different grades to ankle sprains, grade one, grade two, grade three. In grade one and two, there can be some swelling, but you're still able to walk on it. If it's a grade three ankle sprain, it just might take a little bit longer for it to heal. Next, movement slash strengthening. Like I said, motion is lotion, 
you want to keep moving it. If you don't use it, you lose it. So here are some things that you can do immediately after your injury in the acute phase. In this phase, you don't want to do anything too crazy, but you can start strengthening your foot. So this is the ankle four way exercise that you can start doing right away. All you need is a TheraBand. I've tied a loop at one end. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put it around your foot. You're gonna pull so there's some tension on it and you're just gonna press down. And the goal of this is just to get some movement through the ankle. So after an injury, movement is good. It's gonna just help decrease some of that stiffness and swelling. Next, we are going to pull it sideways and you're gonna put your other foot like that. That way you can work on what's called eversion. So the band is pulling my foot in and I'm actively turning my foot out. The key with this is to keep your legs stable, right? So I'm only moving at my ankle. So my foot is being pulled in and I'm pulling out. And if this bothers you, don't let it pull you so far in. Just see what's comfortable. So next we have inversion. So this one is a little bit different. I'll do it on this side so you can see a little bit better. So you're gonna put it around your foot. You're gonna cross your leg over and then you're gonna pull in. All right, so I'm turning my foot in. Also known as inversion. You should feel it on the inside of your ankle. Last but not least, we're gonna work on dorsiflexion, which just means bringing your foot up. This one's a little bit tricky to set up. You can loop it around something sturdy like what I've done here, or you can just tie it to something sturdy. Basically, you're working on pulling your foot up. It's gonna work on the front muscle right here called the anterior tib. With all these movements, try to aim for three sets of 10 to 15. Next, we have heel raises. So you're gonna hold on to something sturdy just for balance. Make sure both of your feet are pointed straight ahead. And all you're gonna do is lift your heels off of the ground and go on your toes. Up and down nice and slow. Try to aim for three sets of 10. And you wanna do this at a two second up and two second down pace. So nice and slow. Doing this will strengthen some of those ankle muscles, which would help stabilize your ankles. So another good one to do is a calf stretch. So you're gonna hold on to a wall or countertop or something sturdy, both feet pointed straight ahead. You're gonna straighten your back leg and bend your front leg. And you're gonna gently lean forward into the wall. So you should feel the stretch around your calf muscles on your back leg. And you're just gonna hold this for 20 to 30 seconds, nice and easy. If it bothers your ankle, don't go as far, right? Just a gentle stretch. Next, you could also do some arch lifts, which will help strengthen the bottom of your foot, which is the foundation of everything. So what I'm doing is I'm gently lifting the midfoot up. So I'm lifting my arch up without curling my toes too much, right? So you should feel it on the inside of your ankle, right around there. And you can do this throughout the day, like three sets of 20, you can do some when you're eating breakfast, do some when you're eating lunch, or when you're just hanging out. And you can also do some toe yoga. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift your big toe up, other four toes down, and you're gonna do the opposite. So four toes up and press the big toe down. So you wanna keep all your foot and ankle muscles strong while you wait for your ankle to heal. Next is the subacute phase. So things are starting to feel better. This is kind of like the week four to week six phase. You're able to walk on it better. It doesn't really bother you unless you point your foot in and do anything too crazy. Now you can start progressing some of those exercises to get it stronger. So the first thing you wanna work on is balance. What you wanna start with is what's called a tandem stance balance. So basically I have one foot in front of the other. You can try to hold it for 30 seconds or so. And you should start really feeling all your little ankle muscles start to turn on. And these are all good things because these muscles help stabilize the ankle. And you wanna do this for three to four rounds. You can also do it on the other side. And typically the leg in the back is the one that's doing more of the work. And if that's too easy, you can just do single leg balance. So you're just gonna lift your other leg up off the ground. And same thing, you're gonna to try to hold it for 30 seconds or so for three or four rounds and really try to maintain that balance. 
And if you want to take it up a notch, you can do some single leg deadlifts. So basically you're balancing on your leg, slight bend in the knee, and you're going to reach forward. Right? Pretend like you're flying and then you're going to come back up while maintaining balance. So this one is a little bit more advanced, but if you can do it, kudos to you. And you want to aim for three rounds of five to 10. Not only do we want to work on your balance, we also want to strengthen your ankles. You can progress your heel raises by doing what's called a two up, one down heel raise. So basically what we're working on is working on your eccentric calf strength. So you're really relying on your one leg to lower your body weight towards the ground. So in this case, I'm working my left ankle. So I'm coming up with two and lowering with one. And I'm making sure that the lowering is nice and slow. And you can do that for three sets of 10 to 15, making sure that lowering is at least two to three seconds. And once you feel like that is really easy, you can start doing some single leg heel raises. So for single leg heel raises, you're just gonna lift your other foot up. You can hold onto something for balance and you're gonna go up and down nice and slow. Around two seconds up, two seconds down. Try to aim for three sets of eight to 10. And the third and final phase is traditionally called the chronic phase, but I don't really like to use that term. Basically this phase is about returning you to your sport. So say you're playing pickleball, this is about getting you back into pickleball. Depending on the severity of your ankle sprain, the timeline when you reach this phase may not be exact. It's different from person to person. Some people may take four weeks, some people may take eight weeks. Some things to look out for when you're in this phase of healing is you can pretty much walk no problem, it doesn't really bother you on a day to day, but you still don't feel 100%, you don't feel comfortable running and changing directions and pivoting on your ankle. There may still be a little bit of swelling in the area, and that's normal. And this is when you can start progressing your exercises even further to get you ready to go back to playing pickleball or anything that you're trying to get back into. With balance, you can start adding a weight to your single leg deadlift, so you can hold on to a weight on the opposite side of your standing leg. You're gonna come down, keeping your back straight, and come back up, right? You're just adding another element to your balance exercise. Remember, not a ton of knee bend. You're just coming down towards the ground and coming back up. You can do some single leg balance with weight transfer. So I'm holding onto a dumbbell and passing it side to side, which will add another element of challenge. You can do five to 10 passes on each side and you can do that for three rounds. You can do some single leg squats, bend your knee and tap your opposite heel in front. Right? You're really working on balance, control and strengthen the knee and the hip. Yeah, three sets of eight to 10. And depending on your level of athleticism prior to your injury, you can start doing some plyometrics, which means some agility work, you can do some skipping, right? You can just skip in place. You're getting your ankles used to producing force at a faster rate. You can do some quick pogo jumps, just like that. Just hops in place. And if you wanna take it up a notch, you can do some single leg hops. You could also do some side to side hops, right? And if, as you get more comfortable, you can make it bigger. Try to maintain that balance. So keep in mind, not everybody is suitable for some of these higher level plyometric exercises, especially if you have limited mobility and before the injury, you weren't able to do some of these things. Just be smart about it and use your judgment. And with these plyometric exercises, you can shoot for 10 to 20 reps for three rounds. Lastly, no matter which rehab phase you're in, performing these exercises every other day or around three times a week is a good place to start because that gives your body a chance to recover so you're not doing it every single day and risking aggravation. So that's how you rebuild an ankle. I also wanna add, as you're progressing through these phases, sometimes flare-ups can happen. Meaning after you do an exercise or after you walk too much, it might be a little extra sore the next day. That's your body telling you that maybe you've overdone it. So listen to your body, it's not no pain, no gain. So if it's sore the next day, take it easy the following day. 
right? Maybe take a rest day. And remember, ankle sprains are super common and most people get back to being 100% after rolling the ankle. So I hope you learned something from this video. Take care.